All right, I am back with another video, and today we are doing a build request, and this is one of the most highly requested builds, probably on my channel in a long time. We are doing a mixture here of a Wild Magic Barbarian and a Wild Magic Sorcerer. Now, why have I not done this before? Well, first of all, the combination you know, combining the two Wild Magic subclasses seems like a pretty obvious thing to do. I mean, I'm sure, I, I mean, I don't watch other, you know, Baldur's Gate 3 build videos from other content creators, because, you know, I don't want to, like, just copy their ideas. I, um, I, so I just thought, you know what, a thousand people have probably done this. I doubt I would have anything new or interesting to add to this conversation. But people keep requesting it over and over again, and then eventually, during the theory crafting livestream that we did the other week, somebody finally, somebody just in my chat said, can you please finally do the Wild Magic Barbarian and Sorcerer combo? And I just said, you know what? Fine, I'll do it. And as such, here we are. Now, as I said, I don't know how much I genuinely have to add to this conversation. If you've seen a build video on this before, you've probably seen it done better. But this is just my take on it. Again, I'm not making the most optimized builds in the world. I'm just here to make fun, what I, well, at least what I think is fun builds. So let's just see where this goes. Um, but then, so, let's get into the actual build, and that starts with a question. What do you prioritize? So, obviously the biggest conflict that comes with making Barbarian and any spellcasting class work is the fact that you cannot cast spells or maintain concentration while raging. So, it depends, so what you start with with this, it really depends on what you want more. Do you want the melee stuff first, or do you want the spellcasting stuff first? In my opinion, I want the melee stuff first. Because if, especially in the early game, just playing a standard Barbarian up until level 5 or 6 is going to work pretty nicely for us here. Keeps things rather simple, and you're going to be getting a solid build regardless. And the Wild Magic stuff for Barbarian has a less chance of being detrimental than the Wild Magic stuff for Sorcerer, so you're going to be playing it safer if you start with Barbarian. Now normally I'd say, oh, but you should start with Sorcerer because you get Constitution saving for a proficiency, which is better for concentrating on spells, but as you probably have already guessed, spell concentration doesn't really matter on this build all that much because, well, uh, we're not going to be able to concentrate because we're raging. So. I've decided to start with Barbarian, but if you wanted to start with Sorcerer, it's absolutely fine. I'm just going to be showing the full kind of leveling of the classes in order. So I'll just show all of Barbarian, then all of Sorcerer. But you may feel like you want to take a one level dip of Sorcerer early on to kind of get that wild magic surge stuff with the magic itself going. But that's entirely up to you. Let's kick things off with Barbarian. As we said, this is getting us rage and an armored defense. We all know how this works, so let's not dwell on it for too long. As for our ability scores, now... Unfortunately, a build like this is incredibly multi-ability score dependent, mad. Basically, we need, we, I mean, you don't need strength. In reality, you could build this with a finesse weapon and you'd be absolutely fine. However, there's a strength-based weapon uh, that I really, really want to get with this build because I think it just works so nicely that I really wanted to focus on using strength. And we're a barbarian. We, using strength is kind of the whole point, so I wanted to build something that could use strength and magic at the same time. Yes, technically, going with dexterity and finesse weapons and blah 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 would be more optimal, but genuinely, who cares? Let's build something cool. So, we're going to start with a 16 in strength. This is going to be our main melee attacking stat. We need this. Dexterity is at 8, because yes, I am bumping them up with the gloves of dexterity, so we're still going to have a dexterity score of 18 at the end of the day, and we just dump this stat, because we don't need it. Constitution is at 14. I would like this a little higher and technically we can make it a bit higher having it at an odd number of 15 and maybe you could bump it up with something like Ethel's Boon or whatever if you wanted to later but I like even numbers so we're going to be sticking with a 14 for now which allows us to either have our wisdom at 12 or at 10 and our intelligence at 10. I don't think we really need intelligence for this build personally I kind of like the idea of this guy just being of this character being just kind of well, not exactly book smart, literally, they're just so angry that the magic around them goes out of control, you know, something like that. And I guess the kind of lore for this character I've decided is just kind of like we have like a, maybe a far off village of like, uh, like half, like a half orc tribe of barbarians, basically has this sacred ritual where they put magical runes uh, in, t in the form of a tattoo onto their warriors and they kind of go under this like kind of witcher style uh, mutagen metamorphosis where they get like their eyes messed up 
uh, their hair kind of gets this like magical blue sheen to it. By the way, this is a modded hairstyle, and they gain this unstable magic power. That's a small bit of lore for you if you want it, but I'm going to say that we're going to have Wisdom at 12, because I don't know, I just feel like it's good for those Wisdom saving throws. And then finally, Charisma at 16, as it is going to be our main spell casting stat with Wild Magic Sorcerer. And fun fact, we are going to be able to get 20 in both of those in both our main stats, that being Strength and Charisma by the end of this build, which is quite nice. As for our skill proficiencies, I went with the Soldier background, just because I like the idea of having athletics and intimidation for a barbarian those two skills are amazing because you can use athletics for, for, for uh, throwing shenanigans if you want and intimidation if you've never played a barbarian as a face of a party please do the intimidation checks are absolutely hilarious <laughs> and so you can kind of pick whatever you like for your um whatchamacallit the uh skills i'm just going to go for perception and survival because yeah why not so, with Barbarian level 2, we're going to get the standard Barbarian stuff like Danger Sense to give us advantage on deck saves against traps, spells, and surfaces. It's okay. But we also do get Reckless Attack, allowing us to have advantage on any attack roll, but enemies also have advantage to hit us. Our chances to hit are going to be pretty high, so you might not by the end of this build, so you're probably not going to need to use it as much. But Reckless Attack is still a nice thing to have. At Barbarian level 3, we get to pick our subclass, and I mean, I think it's fairly obvious, there's no building it up here, we're going Wild Magic. Wild Magic is uh, quite unique, it's going to give us Wild Magic Rage. You enter a range that releases all of the unique magic of, well, just the magic rolling inside of you, causing a random magical effect. And if I could actually inspect it, you gain resistance to physical damage, advantage, and blah 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 blah. You get all the usual rage stuff, but you also get to trigger a Wild Magic Surge. Uh, I will leave links to the uh, Wild Magic Surge tables for both Sor Sorcerer and Barbarian, so you can kind of see what you have to work with in the description below, so feel free to check that out, as there is quite a lot of things. But the thing I find interesting about Wild Magic uh, Rage, specifically, is that pretty much all of the effects are positive. None of them are really detrimental to you, so you're always getting basically a kind of random unique buff whenever you rage, which I think is super cool. We're also going to be getting Magic Awareness. Anyone within range adds their proficiency bonus to, spell to saving throws against spells for one turn. It costs a bonus action, and I believe it can only be used once per short rest. It's shit, as far as I'm concerned. One turn, really? It couldn't be like a Paladin Aura type deal? Whatever. It might help in the most fringe cases, but that one turn restriction just really doesn't make it worth it. Especially when it works on your enemies too. Yeah, your enemies will get this benefit as well. Nah, it's, it's shit. Don't use it. And before I get someone in the comments saying, Magical awareness is not shit. It... Mate. <laughs> Anyways, at this level we do get a feat, and since we're into our Barbarian levels, let's bump up our strength to an 18. This is going to give us a pretty decent uh, strength stat to go with. Now, I will say, I'm not using uh, the Potion of Everlasting Vigor in this build, I'm not taking it into account, but if you did use it, uh, you could take these ability scores out and put them into Constitution instead, giving you a total of 16, because with our equipment we'd still be able to get a total of 20 strength if you did that, even with just a base 16, so it's entirely up to you. But I've decided not to include it in this video because, I don't know, I do think I overuse Ethel's Boon and the Potion of Everlasting Vigor, as, and people kind of commented that on like my last uh, video, which was the left-handed spell sword, and I totally understand that, but I do kind of have to take those specific buffs like that, uh, like those two and the mirror, kind of into consideration when I make my builds, because if I don't, people will point that out, and it's a no-win situation. So, you know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna not include it for the sake of just showing that you don't really need it for this build, but if you got it, you would be more optimized. So let's continue. At Barbarian level 5, we're gonna be getting two awesome things: the classic extra attack, you know what that does, and fast movement to give us a bit more movement speed. As a melee fighter, we love more movement speed. And finally, at Barbarian level 6, because I do want to do a 6-6 six, six split on this build, and I'll show why now, we get a few interesting things that, it, that kind of make this build really feel like a kind of spell sword type build in a weird, unique way. We have Bolstering Magic Boon, basically allowing you to give yourself or an ally bless for 10 turns as an action. This is really cool, and it's unique, and it kind of gives that mystical flavor to Barbarian that you'd expect from a Wild Magic Barbarian, and I really wanted to grab it. You also gain the ability to restore level 1 and level 2 spell slots once per short rest as an action, so you do get to get a little bit of extra juice in the tank for your actual Wild Magic spells, which I think is really neat. I just like the way that this synergizes with actually playing a full cast, uh, caster in addition, so, you know, 
I wanted to grab it, but you could totally not take this level, but you do get an extra rage charge as well though, but you could totally not take this level and go for maybe a 5-7 split instead, or maybe throw a level 1 dip into fighter or something if you want, it's entirely up to you, but I just like going the 6-6 six, six split here, equal half barbarian, equal half sorcerer, that feels nice for a build like this. Next up, let's multi-class. And I'm going to say we're going to grab Sorcerer, because if it wasn't bloody obvious. <laughs> uh, we are going to obviously be going with Wild Magic, which is going to give us a couple of things. Tides of Chaos, we can activate to gain advantage on our next attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, with an increased chance of a Wild Magic Surge afterwards. And of course, the actual Wild Magic Surge itself. We're going to get to choose some cantrips here, and this is where things get a bit weird. Because the thing is, this was... With Rage again, we can't cast cantrips, and we mainly want to be doing melee attacks here. So offensive cantrips aren't really going to do it for us. So while we can grab them if we want some ranged options, if we kind of feel like we want to be in ranged magic mode rather than melee barbarian mode, we can grab a couple here, but let's go over some good options. Friends and Mage Hand are two very powerful utility cantrips in this game. Friends, in my opinion, is one of the best cantrips in the game, unless you're playing on Honor Mode. And Mage Hand is just useful in so many situations you might not be expecting. I'm also going to be grabbing Acid Splash, because this can work both at close range and long range as a damage cantrip, if you find yourself not in rage at that time. And your last one can be whatever you like. It really doesn't matter. Eh, minor Illusion seems a bit fun. Let's try that. As for our spells, now this is where things do get start to get interesting. I've done a bit of testing, done a little bit of research here and called back onto comments that people sent me a very long time ago. There are a unique class of spells that can be cast while in Rage. One of them is Shield. For some reason it seems a lot of reaction based spells, such as Shield or Hellish Rebuke, can actually be cast while ranging, and you'll see in the combat footage later, I've tested shield at the very least, and I got that to work. I couldn't get counterspell to work, I tried to get that one to work, but it didn't for some reason. I'm not sure if just because the opportunity to cut for it to be used never really came up in the combat footage, but it, counterspell might work. But for now I'm going to play it safe and just say I know for a fact that shield works. Uh, as for our second spell, it can be whatever you like, it really doesn't matter. Uh, you could go for something like Featherfall, just any of the utility stuff, Enhanced Leap would feel appropriate. Again, we're a big athletic barbarian, just being able to jump really high makes sense. And in fact, I am going to take it, because it is quite fun to use outside of combat. At Sorcerer Level 2, we're going to be getting our Meta Magic. You know this is the cool stuff. And, I mean, here's the thing though, again, since we're not casting spells all that much, I don't think we're going to be using meta magic that often. There's one specific meta magic that I think will come in really handy, as, we'll, as I'll talk about later, so you can kind of just grab whatever you like. I'm just going to play it safe and grab Careful and Twinned, just because those are the kind of standard ones that work really well, but actually, now that I think about it, extended spell, to extend our spell effects that we cast before going into rage mode, would actually be quite useful, so maybe pick up Twinned and Extended. As for our spells, we do get another one, but again, there's not really much I think is that great for our playstyle, so let's just grab Featherfall, because again, it's another nice utility option. At Sorcerer level 3, we're going to be able to pick up some extra stuff, including Quickened Spell. Basically, what this is going to allow us to do is, to, is only have to use a single turn to get up certain utility spells that we're going to be able to be using while raging before needing to, uh, before actually having to rage. Because if we were to cast two spells as an action and then rage, that's basically a turn wasted. But with Quicken Spell, you can cast one as an action, one as a bonus action, and then rage on your next turn. So it makes sense. We'll pick this up here for like setup rounds, basically. And finally, we do get to pick another spell, and we're up to level 2, and another spell that is going to work while raging is Mirror Image, allowing us to create three illusory duplicates of ourselves that distract attackers. Each duplicate, each duplicate increases your armor class by 3. Basically, you can cast this as an action, then rage as a bonus action, being able to give yourself a ton of extra AC, and if you do somehow get hit, well, you're going to be resistant to that mo to lots of damage anyway, mainly the physical stuff, so, you know, it works out in the end. Uh, you'll find this build is really, really tanky. It's basically a tank build, but in a way of dodging rather than just taking hits. And you'll, you'll see what I mean as we get into further into the spells as well. But Mirror Image is another one that will work while raging. Next up at Sorcerer level 4, we are going to get our next feat. And since we're into 
uh, the we are into the spellcasting levels now, we're into our sorcerer levels. Let's grab that charisma bump to bump it up to an 18. As for our cantrips, again, you can pick whatever you like, it really doesn't matter. I'll go with Poison Spray since it's kind of another close range cantrip. Doing 3d12 poison damage, it's pretty good. As for our spells, we do get to pick another level 2 option here, and I'm not sure if any of these other ones can be work can like be finagled or exploited to work while raging, so I'm just going to pick Misty Step here, because I feel like it's just a nice, again, utility option if you're not raging, being able to teleport around the battlefield can be really useful, so we might as well pick it up. Spin. Oh, look at the hair physics. God, the people who make these mods are actually insane. Look at the hair physics on that, how it lands on the shoulder and everything. And it doesn't even look, it doesn't go through the axe, it actually wraps around the axe. Ah, oh, so sick, I love it, it's tangent over. Uh, now we are up to level 3 spells. Now, like I said, Counterspell may work. Again, I couldn't quite get it to work, but that might be something on my end. Feel free to test this out and get back to me. However, a spell that I know works and is actually really fun and on theme for this build is Blink. Blink does this. At the end of your turn, you roll a d20 on an 11 or higher, you vanish into the ethereal plane. While there, you cannot be harmed or seen in this world. Basically, if you cast this before you rage, this effect will remain up, so it basically prevents you from getting hit as long as you get lucky on those die rolls, and even if you don't, you'll still have things like mirror image and the fact that you are a tanky barbarian to back you up but it felt so on theme for like a wild magic character to just be popping in and out all over the place attack teleporting around and attacking and, and attacking enemies and they themselves prevented from being hit because you know they're in the ethereal plane i don't know it works really cool you'll see in the combat footage how kind of fun this playstyle can be i think you guys will really like it if you've not tried out blink before and most people don't because it breaks concentration on spells but here it works out quite nicely i mean obviously you could grab something like haste but then if you cast haste you can't rage so i actually think haste is would be kind of detrimental if you're trying to play a barbarian that rages so i don't know maybe leave this one behind but it's there if you feel like you want it and finally at sorcerer level six we're going to be getting an extra bit of uh wild magic stuff we're going to be getting bend luck allowing us to give a target a 1d4 bonus or penalty to attack rolls saving throws or ability checks this costs two sorcery points and again since we're probably not using meta magic as often as most sorcerers would this becomes a little bit more valuable especially since this can be used while raging so you know might as well <laughs> And we do get to pick another spell at this level, and you can pick Counterspell. Again, it can just be a useful utility spell anyway, and it might work. I wish I had more of an opportunity to test it, but I kind of have to get this video out on time. I'm a little bit behind, so I'm going to leave this one up to you guys to report back to me to see if it works. <laughs> it's, called, it's called Community Engagement. It's a YouTube strategy. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that is the build. Uh, with that, you are... Can you turn around, please? I don't necessarily want to stare at your giant orc ass. Thank you. Brilliant. Yes, let's, let's look presentable now. As I said, uh, this I, what you're going to be basically getting out of this build is a ton of fun stuff. Uh, you're going to be getting, you know, like I say, you're going to get the ability to rage, do tons of melee damage, be extremely tanky, but you're also going to be getting all these fun utility spells and the ability to, you know, use wild magic from both sources. And I mean, the chaos is immaculate. It's really, really fun to kind of mess around with these. You can even drop kind of in and out of range to, rage to kind of reroll that dice, which you stop turning around. You're being chaotic in the wrong way. God damn it. <laughs> these videos are very unfiltered. Uh, let's get into the equipment. <laughs> Right, so let's go over the equipment now. I mean, a few of these choices are going to seem fairly obvious, so let's get them out of the way now. We've obviously gone for the Gloves of Dexterity, like I said, to bump our decks up to an 11, giving us a decent um, initiative roll, uh, AC, all that good stuff without needing to invest those points into, uh, into decks. So it allows us to, again, max out our Charisma and our Strength. How are we maxing out our Strength? Well, the Mighty Cloth. You gain Bull's Strength, which means you have advantage on all Strength checks, which is awesome as a Barbarian, uh, and your Strength score increases by 2 to a maximum of 20. Uh, you cannot be pushed against your will and you have advantage on staving throws against being restrained, meaning you are just this unstoppable machine of, you know, just fucking shit up. But you also get a unique action called Bull's Rush. Usable once per turn, it allows you to charge your foes and possibly knock you get to charge at your foes and possibly knock them back three meters, also potentially knocking them prone, and it does a little bit of damage, but not much. 
It's just a fun little bit of extra chaos to add into the mix where this barbarian just says fuck it and just rushes you. Like, that's fun. Come on. I like this anyway because it gave me the stat boost, but all this extra stuff is just fun. I, it's chaos. I love it. Next up is the birth right hand, allowing us to get our charisma up to 20 with a plus 2, which is pretty good because, again, while I've taken mostly utility spells here, so it's probably not as useful to have charisma at at your charisma this high. In fact, if you wanted to maybe take the ability score improvements out of this, uh, swap out the birthright, maybe just leave it at a base of 16 so you have a decent chance to hit with spells, but just mainly focus on the utility stuff and put those points into constitution or whatever, you could totally do that. However, I like showing off that you can get your charisma pretty high with this build. If you, say, wanted to grab something like Firebolt or Lightning Bolt and kind of have it be like you can be a blaster caster when you want to be. So, I, while I've gone for mainly utility spells here, build your sorcerer however you like. Now, as for the other stuff, we just have some generic uh, defensive gear because, again, we don't have the highest AC just on its own, so I decided to bump it up a little bit. We have the Cloak of Protection here doing just that, giving us a plus one to our armor class at saving throws, as well as the Bone Spike Boots doing the same because we're not wearing armor or holding a shield. We're also getting the increased jump distance and the ability to use a new bonus action attack called Brute Leap, which allows us to jump at a target and potentially knock them prone. So we have a couple of ways of knocking our enemies prone here, which is obviously going to be good because it allows us and our allies to attack with advantage. As for the accessories, I've gone for the Pearl of Power amulet. Since we only have spell slots up to level 3, this is an Act 1 uh, amulet that can ex replenish expanded spell slots of your choice up to level 3, once per long rest, so you get to recover a spell slot up to level 3. It costs an action, so doing it in combat might not be as useful as, say, using the Spellcrux amulet, for example, but I feel like you're mainly going to be using this outside of combat anyway, so it's just a way to kind of, you kind of mix this with your Wild Magic Barbarian features to recover your 1 and 2 spell slots, and use this to recover a third. It just like it was on theme but honestly this is a free slot pick whatever you like next up we've gone with the ring of fair wild sparks because of course we have because while our sorcerer's tides of chaos feature is active you will always trigger a wild magic surge when casting spells so you know we want those wild magic surges we might as well get them and if we're doing our setup round of casting like blink and mirror image and all that stuff and we cast like these spells as well I've just done that for some reason. Uh, you are going to be able to kind of get those wild magic surges off quite a lot, even if you're not playing a blaster caster playstyle, which again, you absolutely can do with this build. So, you know, it's just nice to be able to guarantee that we get those wild magic surges because we want them. That's what wild magic um, sorcerer is for. And next up is After Death Do Us Part. Now, this is a free ring slot, put whatever you like in here, but I quite like this one, especially on a Barbarian, but especially with one with, like, wild magic such as this, it may... It, I just think it works thematically. When the wearer is downed, they rise once more with half their hit points restored, but are gripped by Shadow Possession. Shadow Possession is the affected entity is possessed by frenzied shadows and will attack the nearest creature. Its weapon attacks deal an additional 1-4 to four necrotic damage. So basically, if this character goes down, you do lose control of them, but they just get up and keep swinging, which I think is super fun and feels on theme for a battle rage unlike ourselves. Um, I will quickly go over the camp clothing here as well, because obviously this is what the build would normally look like, and while I think it does work, I kind of just liked having the more basic look, I don't know why. Uh, this, I'm not going to hover over the name here because of spoiler reasons, but this is a certain companion's camp clothing, recolored with swamp green. In fact, all of this is coloured swamp green, so, you know, that's the kind of dye we're working with here, but I think this is a quite a nice outfit. And finally, one last thing I'll mention, I've just realised I forgot to mention two things, <laughs> uh, is uh, we're using the near miss of crossbow just to have a kind of magical uh, ranged weapon attack that we can use while raging, because this is a hand crossbow that does force damage, and I thought, you know what? That sounds really cool, let's grab it. It does let us cast Magic Missile as well, but, you know, we're not really going to be doing that as much because Rage and all that. Uh, so, you know, but I just thought, you know what, having a kind of magical ranged option while raging is pretty good, so I picked this up, but you can use any ranged weapon you like. And since, um, oh, and the main weapon as well, I'm stupid. <laughs> uh, I've gone with Sethan as our main weapon here because he's got a couple of cool things that work for us. Namely, two spells that don't require concentration, so they can be used um, before we rage. Uh, we have Spiritual Great Axe, we're basically allowing us to cast Spiritual Weapon, the Great Axe variant, at level 6, which is going to deal 3d8 plus 5 force damage, which is absolutely awesome. We can only do it once per long rest, but it only costs a bonus action, so, you know, just getting an extra companion on the field is quite nice. And again, kind of fits into the general force damage theme that Wild Magic Barbarian has. Like, most of the buffs 
have force damage in some way. It's weird. But there's also Seth and Reduce, which is just going to allow us to make a creature smaller. And I just think that's funny, you know, just like, again, another wild magic kind of thing, just all of a sudden your enemy or even yourself is tiny and you could just wail on that little tiny enemy. I think it makes sense. I quite like it. Uh, I just felt like this axe is quite powerful. It's an Act 3 option though, so you know you get it quite late in the game, which is why we can go for another quite chaotic option, the Unseen Menace, which is an, an invisible pike. Uh, basically what this does is this weapon is invisible. Uh, while equipped, it loses this property for two rounds on a missed attack roll. It uh, is a plus one weapon, and you can obtain this really early on, and the invisible weapon thing has a really cool little feature. Basically, it means you cannot be disarmed, it has advantage, you have advantage on attack rolls, you also score a critical hit when rolling a 19. So this is a really solid option, in fact, you might prefer this over Sethen, but I just think Sethen is a bit cooler in my opinion, however, the Unseen Menace is absolutely going to get the job done, 100%. Now there is one other aspect of this build I wanted to talk about. Casting spells while raging is a tricky thing to do, so let's get some things that kind of fit the theme, but aren't technically spells so they can still be used with hard magic. I'm talking the Elithid powers. Now normally I don't mention these when build making because I think they're kind of outside of the regular build making process and it's up to the player to want to use them, but I'm actually going to wholeheartedly recommend them here. Because play, because I've personally played a full campaign with a barbarian that used Elithid powers and it's so fun to get that kind of barbarian feel while still being able to do cool magic-y type stuff. So let's go over the stuff that I think is particularly useful, which I've organized here. Force Tunnel, it kind of fits into our charging and pushing people over motif, just allowing us to push uh, all objects uh, and creatures in our path because we like charge forward and everything in our way gets knocked out of the way, which is pretty good. It's, it's well, I say it's pretty good, it's kind of meh, but I felt like it was on theme. Next up is Concentrated Blast. If we are focusing on a concentration spell while raging, which I've just realized we have none of, but if you decide to pick one, hey, but you want to rage, but you don't kind of want to waste that concentration, then you can uh, use this, boom, and then rage afterwards, kind of getting a big attack that kind of triggers your rage. It will look really cool in practice. Again, I didn't take any concentration spells here, but if you did, there you go. This is kind of cool. Uh, there's also Mind Sanctuary, allows you to uh, basically make a little bubble where anyone inside can take actions or bonus actions interchangeably. So you could basically just use a basic attack as a bonus action and such and other things like that. Again, this is just generically useful, so you know, you might as well pick it up. Fly is just great. Uh, Mind Blast is a big psychic blast. It could be kind of flavored as like a, uh, you know, uncontrolled, uncontrolled burst of like your magic energy. Pretty cool. Black Hole, again, is just wild and crazy. Fits on theme. Psionic Overload is really fun to stack with Rage because it kind of gives you like this like mega demon rage. You just get this like bloody red aura while raging. It's so cool. I would definitely try this. It just gives you a bit of extra damage. and But you take a bit of damage every turn, but who cares? It's fun. Repulsor, just saying get up off me and everything flies away while taking force damage. Again, kind of on theme for the build. And yeah, that's basically the ones I would kind of pick. There are more, obviously, but those are not really as important for this build. I quite like these ones. Uh, so yeah, that is the build. The combat footage we'll be playing now, and as you can see, this build is strange. It's definitely powerful. Uh, it's gonna, and it's tanky, again, in the fact that you can basically make it so you can't really be hit, uh, but it's weird because it kind of takes a while to get going. You definitely are going to need that setup round to feel like you're getting the most of it, and a lot of this build's power is uh, kind of reliant on what magic surges you get, because uh, you can get the ones that are just kind of okay, but some that have some utility, but then you can also get the ones that add a buckload of force damage or let you do kind of extra things and kind of keep that action economy up. And you could just get like weird effects. And again, you could roll really good and just feel like an absolute powerhouse, or you could roll something a bit weird, like turning into a dog. And then it's just like, well, I guess this is my life now. So you kind of have to play it as safe as you can. Uh, you kind of just have to roll with the punches. But again, that's what wild magic is about. It's very, very fun and I feel like you will get a lot out of this build and again things like the elithid powers and the spells that are specific that kind of specifically work with rage intended or not uh, are definitely fun to use so you're definitely going to feel like you are still a spellcaster again you could play this as a blaster caster that kind of uses up all their spell slots and then when they're out of spell slots they're not out of options and they just rage after that you could totally play that way this is just kind of like a base skeleton and kind of my way I would do it where I just kind of use the spells more for utility than anything else and 
again, you get to play a barbarian with really high charisma, which means you can kind of recreate the old meme of, um, you do not see Grog, where you just roll an intimidation score so high that you're basically <laughs> able to get through most common uh, conversations by just um, scaring people. And I feel, and again, if you've not played a party face barbarian, it is so fun. The dialogue checks are absolutely immaculate, especially if you know where some of the more wacky stuff in the game is. Um, specifically, in, this isn't really a spoiler because it's Act 1, but in the Goblin Camp, there's this one uh, guy who worships Leviathan, and playing that as a barbarian, doing that whole sequence, is so funny. Go check that out. It's it's so funny. Me and my friend uh, Dawson, you know, Private Noodles, uh, we were laughing our heads off. <laughs> when we found that scene when I was playing my barbarian character. But yeah, overall, I, again, this probably isn't the most powerful build in the world, but it is certainly a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed making it. And now you can finally all stop telling me to do it, because I've done it. And I've probably done it worse than a lot of other people would do it, but it's my way, god damn it. <laughs> Uh, as for end of video kind of updates and shenanigans, there's nothing really new here. I already made a community post about it, but there is not going to be a live stream this weekend. I'm just too busy. I've got obligations that I have to fulfill, so I can't stream this weekend. Unfortunate, but that is, it is what it is. Uh, as for other stuff, uh, again, the channel is on a massive, massive, like, growth spurt. Uh, we're getting, like... Uh, another hundred subscribers every couple of days. Uh, each video is performing better than the last. Because I was like, wow, the Wolf Pack did really well. Oh, wow, the Feywild channel channeler did really well. There's no way I'm going to be able to top that performance. Oh, and then, like, my last build, the Left Handed Spell Sword, did amazingly well. It, like, each video is surpassing the other in views. The channel is getting, like, it's weird. It's more likely that, it, that the video I upload now is going to hit 10k views than not, which is insane. And in fact, things like the Blazing Blades are hitting 20k. The Dancer of Illustrate, of Illustrate, Illustrate, whatever the fuck, <laughs> that's about to hit 100k. Hell, we're about to hit a million channel-wide views. That's I can't even believe that. In fact, I the, with the trajectory the channel's going at, we're going to hit 5,000 subscribers soon. I was saying thank you for 4,000 in the bloody beard video, which was not that long ago. Like, I, I can't even comprehend, like, how fast the channel is growing. And I can't thank you all enough. But, like, I'm still worried that the channel is going to get a bit too big uh, for me to accurately manage. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't even know what to say, like, again, as much as I love the fact that, like, this channel is growing and I feel like I do have a reason to keep going, the idea of getting, like, a like a decently sized channel, like, even something, like, around the 7-8k mark is just, like, I don't know, it's kind of crazy and I'm, I hope I can continue meeting people's expectations. <laughs> Anyways, I'll stop there because this is getting weird. I'll see you all next time. Thank you for watching. That wasn't even the right outro. Man, I was frazzled this whole video. Yeah, oh well. Upload it regardless. No choice but to keep going.
Stop the intruders! They must not escape! Friend. 